this and that is just going to give us uh, black pen, red pen, yeah! Okay, welcome to my series of integral battles and this right here is the first practice and this is meant to be for the Calc 1 students. And be sure you guys watch my other video where I talk about the three techniques that we have to know in order to do all these questions. And you guys can also go to the description because I will have a link to the file of tons of practice questions that I've come up with for you guys. And for each question, we are not going to talk about just one integral, but rather we will have two integrals at the same time. Because sometimes we may have two different approaches to do the same integral, and sometimes you see that the integral may look so similar, but the way to do them is actually very different. So I think that's the best way for me to illustrate and pinpoint what we have to be careful with, and especially when we are doing the u substitution, how can we choose our u, right? So hopefully you guys all do tons of practice questions and you guys can be good at integration as well. And if you guys like my videos and my worksheet, please help me to share it with your students, teachers, friends, classmates, parents, kids, everybody. Your cats, your dogs too, maybe. Anyway, let's take a look at the first one right here. We are trying to integrate 4x plus 1 and then square, like that. And I will show you guys, in fact, we have two ways to do this integral. The first way is that we notice this is just a power 2, so we can actually multiply this out. And this is the same as saying integrating. To multiply this out, we can just use the binomial formula, so we can square the first term. So 4x squared, we get 16x squared. And then the next term is going to be, we add 2 times the first and the second term. So 2 times 4x is 8x, times 1 is still 8x. X. And the last term is just that you add this term square, which is plus 1. 1 squared is still 1. And don't forget to put on a dx, and since we have three terms inside, sometimes we can use the parentheses to emphasize we are integrating all these three terms. And now we can just integrate them term by term. Because, for example, 16x squared is not affected by these two terms, right? Okay. Right here, all we have to do is just the power rule, but we have to do it backwards. So, we see that this is x squared, we are going to add a 1 to the power first, and then 2 plus 1 is 3. We divide it by the new power, so I put down over 3 right here. And for the first term, we will have 16 over 3, and then x to the third power. And for the next term, this is 8x to the first power, I will add 1 to the power, and 1 plus 1 is 2, I divide it by the new power, and then 8 over 2 is 4, so this is plus 4x squared. And lastly, integrating 1, we get just x, because the derivative of x is 1, so that's pretty much it. And if you want to write it as x to the zeroth power, and you add 1 to the power, and you get x to the first power, and divide by 1, you still get the same thing. And we are all done. And in the end, we put down a plus C of all the work right here, and we can box the answer. That's it. And now, let's take a look right here. Imagine if this right here was 27th power. Do you really want to expand that? <laughs> I don't think so, right? Notice the inside is 4x plus 1. And if you differentiate 4x plus 1, you just get a nice number 4. So, in this case right here, we can actually use a u substitution. I'm going to choose my u to be the inside function, which is just 4x plus 1. And notice that I include 1, because when I differentiate 1, you know, it gets 0, right? So it doesn't matter. Anyway, I pick this to be my u, and then the next step is I will differentiate both sides, and I'll just put on a differential. So du is equal to the derivative of this is just a 4, and we attach the dx right here. And then to take this integral from the x world to the u world, I am going to solve for dx. So let me divide both sides by 4. In other words, dx is equal to du over like that. And now, I will take this integral to the u world, and you see, this right here is my u. So I put on the u right here, and that's to the second power. 
And then the dx is du over 4. So let me put that down right here. And you see, this is just one term, u to the second power. And we're going to just integrate that with respect to u. That's pretty much it. So it's so nice. And even though this is the 27th power, I can do this as well. And you notice we do have a du over 4. The 1 over 4 is just a constant multiple. So I can actually bring that to the front. So that's 1 over 4 right here. And then I will put down, let's integrate u squared in the u world. So I put down du right here. And this right here, we can just do the reverse power rule. So I will add 1 to the power. 2 plus 1 is 3. And divide it by this power. I will put this down as multiplying by 1 third. That's pretty much it for the integration step. And you see, 1 fourth times 1 over 3 is just going to be 1 over 12. And this is u to the third power. So let me put that down. And we're done for the integration steps. Right here, some people will say, go ahead and put down plus c. Um, sure, if you would like to do that, it's OK. But in my opinion, we are not really done yet because we are still in the u world. We have to get back to the x world. So let me just look at the u, and then I will plug in 4x plus 1 right here. I will say this is equal to 1 over 12 times 4x plus 1, and then to the third power. And this is the answer that I want to present. So I will actually add a plus c right here. And we are done. OK? And if you want to add a plus c right here, up to you. Depends on the instructor. For me, I don't really mind. OK, now you might be wondering, is this really the same as that? Well, the best way for us to do it is to just multiply this out and verify it, right? So let me just work this out right here. I will put down 1 over 12 and then times 4x plus 1 to the third power, OK? And you see that this right here is going to be the following. I will have 1 over 12. And to multiply this out, you can just do the algebra on your own. Or the way to do it is you can cube the first term. And, 40, and 4x to the third power, you get 64x to the third power. And then you add it with the next term. You do 3 times the square of that and times that. 3 times the square of this. The square of this is 16x squared. And 3 times that is 48 x squared, and then times 1 is still the same thing. And the next term is you add 3 times this times the square of that. 3 times 4x is just 12x, and then the square of that is still 1. So you do 12x uh, right here. And then lastly, you add 1 to the third power, so it's still 1, like that. And notice, you can distribute the 1 over 12 into the parentheses. And when you do that, you will have to reduce the fraction. You can do it by dividing by 4. So you get 16 over 3, and then you have x to the third power. And notice, it's the same over there. And then for the next term, this and that, you get plus 4x squared. And this and that, you get plus x. And lastly, you get plus 1 over 12. So you might notice, for the function part, like the parts before the c, this right here gives us this additional 1 over 12, but we didn't have the 1 over 12, so what is going on? Well, this is the situation why the c matters. This c right here is technically the first constant when you use this approach. And this right here is actually another constant. I will just put on c2 right here for you guys. And we did the use substitution for this. c1 and c2, they are different. But if you look at the function part, all the parts with x, this part and this part, they are the same. So sometimes when you are doing integrations with two different approaches, you may end up with two different looking answers, but they are actually the same thing, but they are just off by a constant. So the idea is that you do get this additional 1 over 12 right here, but I will actually have to put down the plus c2 here, plus c2. And then right here, I will also put down plus c2. And you see that this right here, it's actually the same as c1. So that's why it means. So sometimes if you end up with like additional constant, you don't need to worry about that too much because the constant plus this constant 
you can just say that's just another constant. So yeah, you can say one plus one, it's not two, but it's just a constant. That's the idea. Anyway, hopefully that's clear. And now let's look at the second one. And you see here we have the integral of sine of 2x plus cosine of 2x dx. And then this right here, we have sine x plus cosine x and then square dx. Which one do you think is easier? The answer to that is, it should be the first one right here. Because notice, I can actually just pick the u to be the inside function. So let me do that right here. Let u equal 2x, and then differentiate both sides. I get du equal just 2, and then you have the dx right here. So for the dx, I get dx equal, you get the du over 2, like that. So in another word, this is the same as integrating. We have the sine, and now the inside is the u, and then I add it with cosine of the inside, which is the u now. And then the dx is the du over 2. And notice we do have this additional 1 over 2, that constant multiple. So I'm going to bring that to the front, and we will have 1 half, and I will put down a uh, integral sign right here, and then this is the sine of u plus cosine of u du. And we can just now integrate this guy and integrate that guy, and then in the end, we distribute the 1 half. So now let's take a look. This is 1 half all the way in the front, and then we'll put down a parentheses for the result of the integration. And here we have to be careful. We have to ask ourselves, the derivative of what will give us sine u? And the answer to that is negative cosine u. Because the derivative of cosine u is negative sine u, but this is positive, so we need to have this negative so that we can actually have negative times negative to give us that. So remember, the integral of sine u is actually negative cosine u. And if you integrate cosine u in the u world, you get positive sine u. Because when you differentiate sine u, you get positive cosine u. So this right here is it. And we are done with the integration step. In the end, I just have to plug in 2x into the u's, and then I can add a plus c at the very end. So I will just write this down for you guys. And I will also distribute the 1 half. So let's do two steps right here. So I get negative 1 half cosine of 2x. And then this times that is plus 1 half. And we have the sine of 2x. And with that, we are done. So we put down a plus c. And this right here is it. And now let's take a look of this one. We have sine x plus cosine x and then square. So the two is at a different place, huh? Hmm. Should I use a u substitution? Well, I don't think so. Because in order for us to use a u substitution, I would maybe choose the u to be sine x plus cosine x for the inside function. But when you differentiate the inside, you don't just get a constant multiple. So it's not a nice, unlike this right here. Once again, earlier I picked the u to be the inside function because when I differentiate that, I get just a constant multiple 4 and then the dx. But if you differentiate sine x, you get cosine. If you differentiate cosine x, you get negative sine. I don't think this is going to work. But if you have two terms and square, we can do something like that. Let's multiply this out and see what will happen. Okay. So let's go ahead and integrate. I will just have to square the first term, which is sine square x, and then add it with 2 times this and that, which is 2 sine x, cosine x, and then I will have to add it with the square of this, which is I add cosine square x, like that, and then dx. Okay. Hey, look at this. Here we have sine square x plus cosine square x, and what does that equal to? That's just 1, isn't it? So we can do the following. This right here is actually just the integral of 1. Once again, this plus that is just a 1. So thanks to a trick identity. And moreover, if you look at this right here, 
2 sin x times cos x. Doesn't this remind you a trig identity as well? It should be, right? Because this is precisely the double angle formula for sine. In another word, I can write this down as sine of 2x. And that's so wonderful. Because now, I just have to integrate 1 and then the sine of 2x like this. And then in the end right here, we have the dx. Okay, so integrating 1, we get x. We're in the x world, okay? So that's just x. And here, let's talk about how we can integrate sine of 2x. And technically, this is like another integral, and the integral of sine of 2x dx. And we should do a u substitution, just like how we did this one right here. But now, let me show you guys how we can actually work this out in our head. You can actually do the following, because the derivative of the input right here is just a 2. It's just a constant, so you can do the following. If the derivative of the input, let's say if this was x to a third power, and the derivative of that is 3x squared, then you cannot do the following, okay? Only when you have a constant multiple to dx like this for the derivative, then you actually will be able to work this out like that. Okay, here's the thought process. I will ask myself, what's the integral of sine? And the answer to that is negative cosine. Negative times positive is negative, and I'll write down negative cosine like this. And the input will stay the same for now. And we have to ask ourselves, what's the derivative of 2x? And once again, this is just a constant 2, right? It's just a number 2. And remember, the u substitution is to undo the chain rule. And in this case, the usual chain rule is that we have to multiply. But when you are doing the integration, you're actually going to divide. So I will divide by the derivative inside, namely, I will divide it by 2. So I will put down 1 half right here. And that's exactly what we have for the first part as well. So this is it. And once again, the derivative inside has to be a constant in order for this to work. All right? And that's it. So I'll just put down plus c. And there are two different integrals, so you don't need to worry about c1 or c2, however. This right here is it for that. Okay, so hopefully you guys all like this video. And if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. And be sure you guys do enough practice questions so you can be good at integrals as well. And I'll see you guys soon in my other videos. That's it.